Hello my friends and welcome back. Today I decided to do a Go Wild double slider card and I wanted to get one more video out before I start my work week back up um, tomorrow. So hopefully uh, this will give you some ideas on how to make the double slider card but bigger. So right here is where you're going to want to pause and cut these out and then once you have all your panels cut out come back and follow along. So my idea here was to make the double slider because I picked this up at the Scrapbook Expo and I'm so excited to use it. I've actually already cut one out just to see how to put it together. And then when I cut it out, I realized, oh, it is really tiny. Perfect for all the Lawn Fawn stuff that I picked up, all these little characters, and along with a lot of the other sets that I picked up, it's going to work great. But for my Elizabeth Craft, the Safari set that I picked up is way too small. So we are going to supersize the fi the uh, double slider card and turn it into a 5 by 7 So that way we can make this giant card, and this is for my son's birthday. Since he doesn't watch my videos, uh, I don't have to worry about him seeing this, but this is definitely because um, his birthday's coming up and I made this for him. One of the things I noticed is my largest double stitch rectangle die worked for the slider pieces. Um, you don't have to have this. If you don't have this die, you can just cut them out and the, the measurement for that was five and a quarter by four. The next um, piece that I just showed you was the six and three quarters by four and seven eighths and then these are the five and a quarter by seven and we're going to score right along a quarter of an inch down one of the longer edges on each page. Now the only, you don't have to do this, but I do it, it just makes it easier for me, is I just snipped off the edges of my tabs because these are going to get folded over and these are going to be how you attach your front and your back together. So we're just going to use the bone folder and we're going to reinforce those score lines that we just made. And then I'm going to take the little tab die from the Lawn Fawn set because it has a little stitch, stitched edge on it. But again, if you don't have this, you don't need it. You can use a one inch um, circle punch if you have a one inch circle punch. But I'm going to use this. And I'm also going to use my mat. And I'm going to use that as a guide for where I'm going to place the little notch piece. So um, because it's five and that little notch piece is three inches, super easy. So I just tape it in place and then I'm going to run away and magically come back and all four of them are going to be done. So I did front and back, both sides. And one of the other things you're going to need to remember that I forgot was if you're going to put this onto a five by seven card base, you are also going to want to do that same thing to your card base. So here I'm taking the piece that is six and three quarters by four and seven eighths and I am cutting, not cutting, I am drawing a half an inch on either side and then a quarter of an inch here down the long edges. This is just my cheater way of making that notch um, where you'll put your bag around it and it holds your bag in place. So I'm just making a quarter of an inch on either side using my mat as a cheater and then this part that I scribble out is what you're going to cut off. So you're just going to cut that away. So I'm going to do that, not make you sit through my cutting. And this is what your piece will look like. Now we need to take a plastic bag, a grocery bag, a doggy bag, whatever you've got, and you need to cut it to the size of the inside of your slider piece right there. So um, right now I'm trimming it down because I was kind of looking at it, eyeballing it, seeing that it needed to be just a teensy bit shorter, um, the width of it. So I'm going to do that. And you don't need um, this much plastic if you're making the smaller one. But because we're making a bigger one, you don't want to cut off the end of your bag because it needs to be longer than the standard size. So you're going to want to leave that part of the bottom of the bag together and then you can kind of trim it down afterwards so that it doesn't get caught up on anything and you'll see um, as I'm kind of playing around with this how how it's going to go together. So I'm going to cut this part off but still leave it attached. So I'm cutting just below the perforation or I don't know if that's called the perforation but where it's attached. The seam. How's that? The seam. That's better. Now I'm going to keep messing around until I figure out which way is up. And I'm going to just kind of lay it down, the bag down, remove the backing off of my adhesive. And then I'm just going to lay it over the top and let it fall. Just because you want it tight, but not too tight. And then 
that's it. Super easy. Now I'm going to put my seam kind of towards the edge where I want to place just so I can keep all the tape in the same spot. All of this is covered. You won't see anything inside of your card, this mechanism here. So um, pencil marks, don't worry about any of that. You're not going to see any of it. But you want to place your double-sided tape and you want to put it not right on the edge, but close to, I would say about a quarter of an inch in, maybe a little bit more. I think I have it about a quarter of an inch. I'm showing you on my mat there. And then flip it over and do the same thing a quarter of an inch in on the other side. Now you're going to need to take some skinny tape. I picked up some eighths of an inch tape at the Scrapbook Expo. So I have that and I'm going to place that right along the top. I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to sit and watch me mess with it. But all four sides right on the edge you're going to place your double-sided tape. Zoom in so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. I always forget that I'm trying to video this for other people. I just get so into doing it that I forget that you might not be able to see what I'm doing. You're going to take your two panels that you have the quarter inch scored edges and you're going to put tape on both of those as well. And that's it. At this point, you're not going to do anything else with this. I'm going to show you where these are going to go. Once you put it together, you want to make sure that your edge, your what you consider to be the front, front sides are up, back sides are together. So it's front, front, right there, and then when you slide it apart, you'll only see the fronts, and then back, back on the other side, because you don't obviously don't want to see that part. So I'm just showing you that you want your fronts facing up, and now. We need to decorate all of our panels before we actually put the card, the rest of the card together. So I'm going to set all this aside and then I'm going to start decorating the panels. So here you can see my mess. I have everything all cut out and all put together. This was a, so much fun, but it did take quite a bit of time. So I did not include it in the video because otherwise this video would be really long. Um, but just know that they go together very easily. Um, Elizabeth Craft Eyes are great. They're super simple. The pictures are easy to follow. And I just basically, each one of the pieces, I just took some of my Distress ink in a matching color. And I went around the edges of each piece just to give a little bit of dimension. And um, that's pretty much it. That's all I had to do. And then just follow along and put them together. And now I'm just going to add some clouds to all my pieces. And the clouds don't have to go all the way to the bottom because, as you can see, I've got lots of bushes and grass and stuff that's going to go on the bottom. So now I'm just going to kind of figure out placement for where everything's going to go. And then I'm just going to start attaching everything down. So one of the things that I noticed as I was putting it together is this is your top panel. So you don't have to be super picky about your top panel as far as things being adhered flat but your two side panels you need to use quite a bit of glue and I would say glue is your best friend um, for your side panels because you don't they're going to slide in and out of the card and you don't want anything to get caught up when you're trying to put the card back you know slide your things back in or pull them out so um, my suggestion is to use you know, plenty of glue and make sure that everything is secured down flat. There's no dimension on your side panels at all. So now I'm just going to put together my tree. This came in the safari set. So I bought the whole safari set and I bought the whole baby animal set. So if you are going to one of the scrapbook expos and Elizabeth Craft is going to be there, um, they do have these in bundles. So you can pick up the whole thing and you don't have to worry about going home and then realizing, oh my gosh, I didn't have the tree or I don't have the Jeep or whatever. Um, it's already ready to go in a bundle for you. So now I'm just going to put together all of my little hanging jungle elements. You can see it there on the side. I'm just kind of following where the leaves go because I, I wasn't really sure where all the leaves go. And then I'm just figuring out placement for all my little vines. And I think this monkey is so adorable. Um, if I do it again, I'm going to change up his colors to make him just a little bit lighter because he, he came out really dark. But um, I had bought the, I think it's called AC, AC cardstock. Um, in big packs because they had it at the scrapbook expo and they had it for a pretty decent price So I picked up those and I was trying to coordinate my colors um, from the AC cardstock So the browns are a little bit darker than I 
would like them to be. So next time I'll probably do his face and his ears and his feet in a much lighter color. Because I am going to do more of these cards because I've got more people I want to give them to. I think this came out so stinking adorable. I'm so excited. I can't wait for my son to get it. And then the way I put it together with the 5x7 with the backing of it, you don't have to put this on a back. You can just flip the card over and have your sentiment on the back. You don't have to add it to a base, a card base, but I did. And by adding it to the card base, I didn't realize I was doing it, but um, it created like a stand. So you can open it up and it'll stand up on the table. So you don't even have to, like, if you leave it open, you can set it up on a shelf or whatever, and it's super cute. So I'm going to pop up my elements from my front because I can. There's no reason not to. And one of the things that I've learned um, from making scene cards is glue your animals to your, like if you're going to have them, in this case, we have them driving the Jeep and riding in the Jeep, just glue them to the Jeep and then pop the whole thing up. And then that way you get the dimension all the way around. Um, and it's much easier. So there they are all popped up. Now we're going to put the card together. And I don't know why, but I didn't turn on the camera when I actually attached it to the tape, the double-sided tape. So I'm freezing it right here to show you where you want to line it up. So you want your two edges to line up with the outside of the piano. That makes sense. You'll see when you put it together. If not, Lawn Fawn put together an awesome how-to video, and this is basically the same template that I'm using that their dies are. We just hand cut them out instead of having dies because I wanted a much bigger platform to use. So um, if you Google Lawn Fawn and go to their double slider, they have a tutorial, and it's pretty much this is exactly the same. The only tip I have here is don't put together your card, as you can see how I'm doing it. Make sure you slide everything up out of the way before you adhere down all of your edges. And the other thing is, what I'm gonna do right now, I should have done before I added the slider element to the inside. So your front and back panels, like right now is when I realized, oops, you're supposed to be in there. So without the slider element in, you wanna remove your tape, you wanna line them up right next to each other, nice and even and then lay down your tab. I'm just gonna line up the other side. It's much, diff much more difficult with the slider in than it was without the slider. And then you're gonna remove all of your tape, your adhesive backs. Make sure that your slider element is out of the way so you don't tape anything down when you close the card over the top. Just make sure all your plastic and your pieces are all out of the way and then just close the lid and seal it up. That is it. Super easy. And then you pull out your sides and boom. Awesome. So now I'm going to attach it to my 5x7 card base and this is the part where I that you want to put your notches in first. Um, before you attach it if you put it on a base because um, you'll see me kind of struggle trying to get my fingers in there to pull. Um, you don't want to have to work that hard <laughs> to open them up. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm going to do my stamping and I wanted it to say go wild on the outside and party animal on the inside. So that's what I'm going to stamp now. I'm just going to speed up through this part. And I'm using... Um, the Versafine Onyx Black Ink because this obviously isn't going to fit in my my mini Misty and I want to make sure I get a good impression the first time. No double stamp in here. Put some little paw prints and then on the outside we're going to do Go Wild and I want to cover up that seam right there under the Jeep so I'm going to kind of use it like a like a giant license plate on the front but kind of wonky. I don't, you'll see how I, it's just basically to cover stuff up and I'm gonna, I wanted to bring some more of that orange from the bird to brighten up a little bit more of my scene here. So I'm going to use the orange to back my sent my little sentiment. I'm looking around trying to figure out where I want to put it and then I just kind of wonky it off to the side right here. That kind of covers that scene. Perfect. And now we are done. Here's the card, all finished. Go wild on the outside, party animal on the inside. 
pull your tabs and see here, I can't get my fingers in there, so I realize I made a mistake, but my son doesn't mind. He'll work for it. Pull out the edges, and there it is. Um, thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Um, I hope this gives you a little bit of inspiration to make bigger cards, and um, yeah, definitely highly recommend going to the Elizabeth Craft um, booth at Scrapbook Expo if you're going. Um, also, you can go online and pick this stuff up as well. Uh, I believe ElizabethCraft.com to get these to get these dies. So again, thanks so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I will see you again next week. Bye bye.